three months into our sailing adventure, and we're completely competent fair-weather sailors. We spent our first two months anchored in the same spot, partly because of the coronavirus lockdown, and partly because we lacked the skills to do much of anything else. We've now acquired sailing lessons, learned the rules of the road, and we moved on to a whole new town. We've got a few more things to wrap up before we continue our journey to New England. We've got to upgrade our ground tackle, and once that is accomplished, we've got to sell our car. The city of Clearwater Beach has a really great day dock. That's where we go when we need to get to shore, but we're usually in our dinghy. Since we need our anchor out of the water to change out our chain, today we'll be taking the big boat. Hey, hey, hey. at the helm again. Here are some of the other boats that call this anchorage home. While there are other cruisers anchored here, most of these people live here full time. And here's Pimo, being ridiculously cute, as usual, stoked to be unsure. We've got two solid anchors, a main and a backup. Every component is really high quality, but we've got two issues. For one, our chain on the main anchor doesn't fit our windlass, and we don't have enough of it. Secondly, there's a badly chafed section of rope that needs to be removed. So we're going to buy a new chain of the proper size and length, remove the bad section of rope, and have the two spliced together. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it all done in one day so we had to go back to the anchorage. We spent the night hooked in on a less than ideal setup, and even though it rained, the winds were thankfully calm. Upgrading our anchors was a must before beginning our voyage. On the want side of the ledger was prettier teak. So, bright and early the next day, with everything rinsed down by the rain, Maggie goes about restating our wood. All right. Get those gloves on before we anchor. Yeah, I'll get the gloves on and put this anchor up right now. Yeah, right? Ah! Cool. We head into the day dock again, greeted by the first sea turtle that we've seen since we started sailboat life. Like everyone else in the country, we've been on lockdown because of coronavirus. Things are slowly starting to open up at this point, and we're eager to enjoy some shore life. Plus, Maggie caught a nasty bruise on her ass while working on the anchor. She definitely needs a beer. <laughs> hey guys, we're headed to shore to uh, maybe get a little sushi. Yeah, walk around a bit, take things for a walk, get some sushi maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep, so uh, join us. Peace. Everything is still to go only at this point, with no dine-in available. We have a beer next to the outdoor fish tank at the sushi restaurant while we wait for our food, fantasizing about how one day in the not too distant future, we'll get to experience scenes like this in real life. We take our sushi to the edge of the beach. It doesn't officially open until tomorrow, but people are out there anyway. We arrive back to the boat at sunset, our bodies sustained by sushi and beers, and our souls satisfied with the progress we are making on our journey. 
We are almost ready to begin the 1600 nautical mile voyage to New England. And Maggie catches a fish. Just kidding, that's bait from Walmart. Okay. I really loved anchoring at Clearwater Beach. The day dock was convenient for both the sailboat and the dinghy. It was so beautiful, and no one ever bothered us. We're nervous about the journey ahead, but also simmering with exuberance. We've got just a few things left to do, then we're free to go anywhere. But not without some bumps and bruises. How's that look? Ah oh, man, looks pretty gnarly today. And our dinghy is acting up as well. We eventually figure out that we need a new fuel line and fuel pump. And I've got my full quarantine 15, like the dreaded freshman 15, bot in effect, <laughs> nice. making getting up that fixed pier at low tide a little tricky. Nevertheless, the overall simplicity of this life makes it so worth it. So we think we're kind of big, you know, 35 feet, it's pretty big, right? But then, look at this guy just pulled up next to us. Pretty close. I'm guessing that it's like 38. This is about a little too. So it's a little different. But awesome. Back at Don's and Reach, getting our anchor sorted. We get treated to a lesson on splicing anchor line to chain by Billy. We've met so many old-timey sailor dudes who want nothing but to pass on traditions and keep us safe. Perhaps it's the fact that sailing has been around for thousands of years. Whatever it is, it's great to have that feeling of camaraderie. How's it going out there? Ah, pretty good. I just need to leave on this clamp. Cool. And it's ready? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I gotta put it on still, but the whole oh. thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. Just came to go on this clamp. <laughs> yeah. I was just coming out to come video you. Cool, right now. <laughs> also accomplished at Don's, we sold our car. Another awesome associate of theirs, Rick, just so happened to know someone who needed a reliable car. He admired the unique style of our PT Cruiser. I informed him that it was for sale and it didn't take long until the deal was made. We did it. Sold it. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rick. And Don's. And Don's. Whoops. Yeah, if it wasn't for Don's place, we wouldn't have found Rick. Yes. Woo. Peace, guys. We head back to the beach, now fully open, for a celebratory beer. Our car was the last thing tying us to land. We were now free to move about the world. We couldn't leave Clearwater Beach without actually sitting on its beautiful white sand. So we found the dog beach, which was really close by. <laughs> it's on your toe.
We love each other, and there's nothing that we can't take on together. We're out of here, leaving our last anchor. And just like that, we were officially on the move. We left the confines of the intercoastal waterway and headed through Clearwater Pass to the ocean. With the wind at our backs, we were on our first downwind run. Our voyage had finally begun. We faced a lot of uncertainty, and the coronavirus quarantine meant that we were well behind on our plan to be north of Virginia by June 1st, the official start of hurricane season. Fortunately, we learned of a new route to follow. We didn't have to go all the way around the tip of Florida. There was an inland waterway running across the middle of the state, connecting the Gulf of Mexico to the Atlantic Ocean. This route would save us over 200 nautical miles and weeks of time. Join us on our voyage as we continue to hone our skills and do our best to avoid the dangers of hurricane season in the southern United States. And a big heartfelt thank you to our newest patrons, Maria Figueroa and Randy Moe.